All right then my friends, so now we have the correct UI and the correct data showing for users that are logged in and also for users that are logged out. Now what I'd like to do is take this one step further and allow users who are signed in to create a new guide. So right now, if we click on this, we can input a guide title and guide content, but it's not gonna do anything after we click create. It's not gonna to go to the Firestore database and then add on a new guide to that collection. So we need to hook all this up so to do this, I'm going to go to the auth JavaScript file right here. And I know we said this was just for authentication, but I think this should be for anything Firebase related. And it kind of incorporates authentication because only users who are logged in can add these uh, different guides. So let us now create a reference to the actual form for adding a new guide. So if we scroll down a little bit right down here, we can see this form has a create form ID. So let's grab a reference to that first of all. So in auth.js, I'm gonna place this underneath the auth state changed method. A little comment first of all, just to say create new guide, and then we'll say const create form is equal to documents.querySelector. Um, can I spell? No, query selector. And we want the create hyphen form ID, cool. So now we've got that reference. Now we need to attach an event listener, the submit event listener when they submit the form. So we'll say create form dot add event listener. And the listener is going to be for a submit event. We're taking the event object by default into the arrow function, which is fired when there is a submit event. And the first thing we need to do is prevent the default action from occurring. We don't want it to refresh the page. Awesome. So now we've done this, what do we want to do? Well, we want to interact with the database because we want to take the values that a user has entered in here, the title and the content, and we want to create a new record in our guides collection in the Firestore database. And in that record, it's going to have the title and the content that the user types in. So since we're interacting with a database, we can use the DB object. Remember, we created that at the very start down here. If we scroll to the bottom, this thing right here, this is our reference to the Firestore. So we're saying DB and we want to go into a specific collection. So we say dot collection and then in brackets, we want the guides collection. Okay, so we have a hook, a handle on the guides collection. Now we want to add a new document. So we use a method called dot add to do that, very simple. So this method takes in an object and the object that we pass in to this method is gonna represent that guide that we want to add to the Firestore database. So we're going to pass in an object, curly braces, and then this object is going to have two properties. Remember, the title of the guide and the content of the guide. So the first property title, where do we get that from? Well, we get it from the create form. And remember using square bracket notation, we can get a handle on the individual input fields. Now, the input fields that we have inside the create form, if we have a look, uh, this one right here, so we have an ID of a title, and we also have an ID of content. So we can say create form in square brackets, then a string, the title, right? So that gets us a reference to the actual field, and then we can say dot value. And by the way, an alternative to this right here, this square bracket notation, is just to do dot notation. So we could say dot title, and that does the same thing. It finds an input field with the ID of title, and then we get the value of it. Now, I prefer to keep it consistent and use square brackets because sometimes we have IDs that are double barrel. And by that, it means we have a hyphen. So title, hello, for example, imagine it was that ID. If it was that ID, we couldn't just say dot title hyphen hello, because at the minute, this is now trying to subtract something. OK, so this only works. Dot notation works when it's one single word. Since we sometimes have several words double barrel together, I like to use this kind of array syntax, if you like, this square bracket notation, then pass in a string, which is the name of the ID. OK, so just a little sidestep there. So anyway, that's our title. We've got the value from that. Next, we need the content. And again, this is from create form in square brackets. The string is going to be this time content. That was the ID. So we can now say if these things get out of the way, right, dot value. So we're grabbing the value from both of those fields and we're adding it to this object. This object is now being added 
to the guide's collection. So Firebase is going to take this object, turn it into a Firestore document and store that document with those values inside our guide's collection. So that's pretty awesome. That was very, very simple to do. So now this is, again, an asynchronous method. It takes some time to do to go out to the server to Firebase, add this document to our collection and return to us to say, hey, all's good and it's done, right? Or rather, it could say in some circumstances, hey, something's gone wrong. Either way, it's asynchronous and it might take half a second or a second to complete. It returns a promise. We can tack on a dot then method, right? Which is going to fire a callback function when this is complete. So inside this then method, let's pass in this arrow function. It doesn't really need to take a parameter. We don't need to take anything back from the response because all we've done is added something, right? But what we do want to do now when that document's been added is clear the form and close the modal, right? So let us do a little comment first of all to say close the modal and reset form. Okay, now we've closed the modal several times before. So instead of me writing it out again, what I want to do is grab this stuff where we've done it previously and paste it up here. We're just going to change a few things. First of all, the modal we want to close is not modal sign up, it's modal hyphen create because that's the ID of this modal right here. So we want to close that one. We get a reference to that element right here and store it in modal. Then we use materialize, we get the modal property. We use the get instance method to get an instance of the modal and we pass in this thing right here, right? Which is the modal we want to close. Then we close it. Then we take the sign up form. Again, we want to change this to create form because that's what we then want to reset. Okay. So we've done that now. We've now added a new document and we've also reset the form. Okay. So let's save this and see if this all works. So. If we go to create new guide, guide title, how to rescue peach. Okay. Guide content, lorem, ipsum and create. So hopefully this should add a new document, then close all this for us. So create closes all that. Now let's check out this. Um, sorry, we want the database. Let's check out if it's added that new item. Now there's three there, so it should have done. There we go. How to rescue peach. It's right there. Awesome. Now notice one thing, it's not updated over here. And that's because currently we don't have a real time listener set up to the database. And we are going to tackle that in the next video. But currently, if we refresh, then it should appear. Okay, there it is. How to rescue Peach. Now I want to try one thing here. Remember, if we go over here and look at the rules, did we actually save these before? I don't think we did, but we actually created them. Uh, they could be here. No, we actually created them in the last video so that only authenticated users could actually read and write. So what I'm going to do is just paste these back in. I'm going to comment this thing out first of all, and then I'm going to go down below and I'm going to paste this stuff in. Okay. So now we publish those and now we're only allowing people who are logged in to read or write these different things in here. Okay. These different guides. Now, for example, say we were logged out over here, log out. Now we don't see the create guide uh, link anymore. So you might think, well, okay, no one who's logged out can create a guide, but you know, anyone with a bit of nous for front end development can inspect an element and see what's going on over here. They can go inside the nav wrapper and they can look for anything that says create guide. Um, it's not that one. It's not that one must be this one. And they can then set the display of that to something that is not none. So if I zoom this up, they could go to display of this thing and set it to block, right? Now that's all it takes. If I close this now or just make it smaller, now we can see create guide and I could go in and I could do blah and blah right now. And I could potentially create a guide. However, when we create this, notice that A, that doesn't close down and B, we get this error over here. So if we go to the console, it says uncaught error missing or insufficient permissions. And that is because my friend, when we send this request to add a new document to this database, the rules are saying, hang on, these rules right here, they say that unless you're authenticated, you can't read or write to this collection. So I'm going to send back this error and say that we don't have the permissions to do this. So that is protecting our database right there, our data, which is awesome. 
What we can do now though is we could collect this error, we could catch it inside our code and just log a different message to the console instead of this. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to go back to the code and then what we can do is tack on a catch method to this thing right here because it still returns a promise right here. So we can catch any errors by saying dot catch and then take in the error into a callback function. So when this runs right here, if there's no error, then it runs this. If there is an error, then it catches that error. It doesn't run this right here, but it catches the error, runs this function, and we can do something with that error. So I could say console.log error that we received back, and then we get a property on that error called message. So I'm going to log that to the console. So again, we're not logged in. I'm going to just expand this and inspect. Then I'm going to find, again, if I can zoom this down, the ally which is for creating, so this right here. I'm going to set the display to block so that we can see that. And then we'll create a guide, the guide title blah and blah. So an awesome guide. Then create that. And over here in the console, now you can see missing or insufficient permissions. OK, so even if they're quite savvy and they can work out how to display something in the console, now they can no longer just add anything or write to the database because now we've locked it down, right? We're saying, no, you can't add anything because you're not logged in. So there we go, my friends. That's how we add stuff to Firestore using the add method. And also notice if we go to the data, it auto generates a new ID for us when we use that add method, which is cool as well. But again, we're locking this down using the rules so that people who are not logged in cannot access the data, okay?